Hello. Well, welcome to today's uh, webinar. My name is Jacob. Uh, I'll be talking about courage and confidence for people that have a disability, um, looking to get into freelance work or being an entrepreneur. Um, I'd like to start off by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land in which we are all um, dialing in from today. I'll be dialing in from the Karingai land. Um, and I'd like to thank you um, to Gary for giving me the opportunity to talk from my experience. This webinar is a recording on top of a recording. Um, it's previously been done. Um, the first bit I'll be doing alone. You'll notice uh, the this, this slight switch over towards the end. So um, I'd like to think about what courage and confidence is when um, going into anything. Um, and I love analogies. So I'll start off by explaining it like this. Having confidence and learning how to ride a bike is knowing about your own ability and being somewhat comf comfortable um, in riding. But the courage is going down a hill knowing that you've never done that before. Um, I believe that we do need a little bit more courage into taking um, leaps into the those uncertainty. Um, during this um, more of a workshop, I'd like to uh, say, just take some notes. Hopefully you can learn something um, or you could tell a friend about this as well that's starting off and has a disability. Um, so the agenda uh, for this is, uh, well, I'll talk about my sh story shortly um, and I wanted to talk about the character strengths and virtues, um, entrepreneurship and the NDIS, building a supportive network, developing uh, business skills, starting a business, building confidence through small wins, advocacy and self-representation, um, mental health and wellness, NDIS funding categories, and then we'll have some time for Q and A's. So for, for me, I um, in 2019, I sustained a spinal cord injury um, and I learned about needing to get support from people for the first time. And um, the words that you choose are really important when getting support. Um, and I learned that um, if you have a passion and without expressing yourself, that can go nowhere. Uh, we do need a community behind us. We need to work together. Um, my passions are um, with employment opportunities, um, education, accommodation, um, and also the social events. And um, I do a little bit of public speaking as well. I've worked at some fairly big organizations in the disability sector um, and also small startups. So I've experienced um, the big wins and also the the pain of needing to bootstrap um, and work in, with a small team. So the character strengths and virtues, um, for me, I like to just find what I'm passionate about and what my purpose is. Because passion is like the fire on the inside that is exciting to get out of bed and do something that's impactful. But your purpose gets you out of bed when that flame goes away. And I, I found that um, to find those things, it's about reflecting myself. It's very simple. And um, so I put together a list of some character strengths. And um, in these character strengths, we have the virtues. So those virtues are the wisdom, courage, humanity, justice temperance and transcendence. But for me, I'd like to find like my character is kindness. Um, it, I, I like to have humor, teamwork, curiosity, um, bravery as well. And there's a, there's a few things that come in and out over time, but it's just important for me to find myself before I pursue it, the next thing that I do. Um, so entrepreneurship and the NDIS, who would have thought that you could use your funding in the NDIS to actually pursue 
your own goals and to earn an income. I've been really fortunate to find uh, the micro enterprise project. Um, and it is a really great initiative that not many people know about that uh, NDIS um, support in my own plan. Um, and I've put in a, a QR code here, which you can scan um, and it will take you to their website. Essentially what it does, it gives you funding to get a paid skilled worker to help you pursue your micro enterprise. And an example would be if there was a carpenter that had an injury and they really wanted to pursue a small woodwork hobby that could earn an income. Well, they can apply for this micro enterprise program and well, the NDIS will then allocate funding to then pay a skilled worker to do saw cutting, measuring, and things like that. Some people um, might not have that function anymore to do those, uh, to, to move a wheelbarrow. So these paid workers um, are not support workers as such, but they could be people in the community um, that can do this work it's a really fantastic initiative and i've had um, actually close to ten thousand dollars put into my two-year plan for this service uh, i'd like to go and then and talk about uh, building a supportive network because having a disability and being a minority is very difficult um, and often like it can lead to burnout when you want to pursue things um, and burnout is a very serious thing that we need to take, you know, not lightly. For me, I found that you got to have a whole bunch of people backing you up. And I'd like to say, like, you need mates. You need to connect with people that are on a journey like yourself. Um, you, you need to find where your strengths are and your weaknesses are as well so then you can focus more on your strengths um you need to find mentors um that have been there um and that can give you some insights or maybe make connections to people that they know in this space whether it's you're looking to create the first accessible spaceship i know it's quite an achievement um perhaps a mentor could be working at NASA, right? Who knows? For me, I will connect with them um, on LinkedIn. I'll send them a message and I'll ask, look, what you're doing in your space is fantastic. And I'll, I'll explain my story and I'll say then, would you be available to catch up for a coffee, whether it be virtual or in person at your favorite cafe? And uh, that's how I would find a mentor. Um, and finding advocates as well. So the advocates would be the ones that keep talking about what you're doing in their friendship circle. And they're the ones that are providing connections and introductions. So finding these people, they're quite helpful as you start up from scratch. And then really importantly is just maintaining these connections. Um, and there's a bunch of tools that you can use and for example, um, you could put all these uh, friends and mentors into a HubSpot, which is a CRM, a customer relationship management tool. Um, and HubSpot, for example, is free for anybody. But that way you can say, well, last time I spoke to them was seven months ago. I think it's time for me just to drop them a message um, and, and things like that. And just maintaining this this circle is really important. So developing uh, business skills. Have you ever considered joining a free accelerator? I went to Western Sydney Uni Launchpad Accelerator and I had an incredible bunch of uh, mentors guiding myself and other um, entrepreneurs. Um, for example, my mentor at Western Sydney Uni was Jamie Pride. He was the ex-CEO of realestate.com.au. 
Um, I learned so much about customer discovery and the b- big thing is about validating your idea. Um, and it's about testing without spending your whole life on an idea. So not building Instagram for cats as an example. I put a QR code here uh, where you can find a list of um, over 70 accelerators in Australia. Some of them actually um, give funding for equity on your on your startup. And some of them um, would just provide some really great resources. So have a break, write some notes down if you need, um, or we can speed this up. We're going to continue. So uh, starting a business, um, it's, a, it's an ambitious thing. And I found that over time working for small startups, um, there was this really great way into it. Um, and if you if you just start up a website and expect people to buy your product, um, it's quite unrealistic. For me, it's about raising awareness, creating education, having social proof, and having a call to action. So those four things, whether it's working on your own startup or having your own freelance work, are really important because people need trust. Um, and they don't often want to be the first person, first business to to use your product. And I use this as well, even just finding support workers. So I would then really clearly say, for my example, if I'm helping with access and inclusion in the workspace, I'll reach out to someone, whether it's in person or on LinkedIn, say, hello, my name is Jacob, and I am really passionate around workplace inclusion um, and accessibility. And I do this by explaining how accessible this place is by going in person and showing you the barriers that someone with a wheelchair that uses a wheelchair might face. And these are some of the places that I've worked for in the past, whether it's volunteering or whether it's um, they're the people that are my friends or mentors. If you really would like to make your workplace more accessible so everyone is included, this is how you can get in touch with me. So those four things are very important. And I like to use them not even in a startup or business, but also just talking to people um, about like what it is that I'm doing. I find that very helpful.